going to call the regular council meeting to order. Uh, Shannon, please do the roll call. Mr. Roden? Here. Mrs. Stoffer? Here. Mr. Yates? Here. Mr. Ceresi? Here. Mr. Fury? Mr. Scafidi? Here. Mr. McDermott? Here. Right, please join Mr. Ceresi and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. Father, we seek your guidance for the business that is before us. In planning for the future of the city of Twinsburg, give us vision. Guide us to make decisions that are not self-serving, but for the betterment of our community, so we can continue to move in a positive direction. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is the approval of minutes from April 23rd. Any, anything about those? All right, those stand is written. Uh, any words and presentations? There's none this evening. Okay. Any audience participation? Yes. Lauren Senstruck. Thank you. Uh, Council Froelkes, um, I'm here this evening to uh, seek City Council's consideration in requesting that the Mayor and City Administrators uh, place more timely and current information on the City's website. Um, with those timely updates, it would be helpful and more uh, intuitive as to what's going on in the City. Uh, some examples I noticed, uh, now I'm retired, um, I noticed on the, the Mayor's webpage that the latest state of the city address was 2009. I don't know what happened to 2010, 11, and 12. I know there was some bad economic times, <laughs> but uh, you might want to include also like mayor's reports to city council if those are available. Um, public meetings and agendas sections on the website. I noticed that the uh, minutes from the council meetings are like three to four months behind. Uh, no reflection on the clerk. I know everybody's busy, but. Um, you know, once minutes get approved, it'd be nice to see them out there. That way, I wouldn't necessarily have to come up here all the time. Not that I don't mind like seeing council people and stuff, but <laughs> know what's going on in the city. It's, you know, we get the Twinsburg Bulletin and things like that, but it'd be nice to see them at the website. Um, and and uh, Karen, I noticed in the finance department that it would be kind of nice to see like the monthly reports that council receives so we can kind of see what's going on with the finances of the city, uh, things like the budget. Um, any uh, departmental costs like personal services things like that I know everybody may not be interested in it I'm a former finance director so I find those things interesting since I live in town it would be nice to see them um, I'd like to uh, commend though the police fire and service departments on all kind of bad news for you guys but um, you know their websites seem to be more current and up-to-date uh, so I kind of uh, give them kudos on that uh, obvious I'm a person with disabilities um, and I rely on finding a lot about what goes on in my city government by looking at the website um, it would therefore like to request a council consider uh, and I do see that you videotape the council meetings and I know a lot of communities are moving forward with the modern electronic age of putting things streaming out there on the website so we can visualize them um, that would be very helpful um, and I don't think these requests are unduly demanding on time or aren't available. It'd really be appreciated to see them at the city's website. Um, I also would like to take this time to thank council and all the administrators of the city for serving us. I know it's very demanding, it takes a lot of time, and we do appreciate it. Um, and I'd just like to see that available on the city's website. Um, and I'll look for that and uh, hopefully we can get some more information on there timely and then uh, I won't have to come back here all the time I can just maybe send you an email okay <laughs> thank you very much I appreciate it thank you, thank you. Thank thanks you. anyone else Shan? there is none okay next we'll move to uh, council communication and committee reports we'll start with mr. Yates yes the uh, the Planning Commission met on May 6th um, pretty busy agenda uh, there was a number of items <coughs> that was discussed um, one is the uh, Wilcox uh, 
developing a new security entrance. I guess they're doing it throughout all the school buildings, but that particular uh, project needs um, um, some additional work that, that had to go through Planning Commission, and that passed. Um, there's going to be a, uh, they passed the uh, preliminary site plan for Corbett's Farm. So I know a lot of residents have been asking questions about Corbett's Farm, but uh, we do have a site plan that meets code now. Um, so we anticipate uh, that moving forward. Um, let's see, there was a lot of consolidation for the Cleveland Clinic that's been in front of Planning Commission for, for several weeks now that passed. Um, some of the rezoning that will be on our legislation for Westside Falls um, also passed. Um, there's a new yoga studio that's going into uh, the downtown area near Scorchers, and uh, there was a determination that uh, in that district that uh, the yoga studios are a similar use, and so there will be a, basically a permitted use um, in that district if legislation, legislation passes tonight. Um, there's um, an update to Section 114810 that's going to be on uh, our agenda tonight that we'll be discussing, um, and that's regarding our C5 district in terms of adding a couple more uh, permitted uses in that area. Um, Panera Bread, there will be a public hearing at the next uh, Planning Commission uh, meeting, which is on uh, May 20th, and that is in regards to their uh, seeking approval for their outdoor patio, which I know looks like they've already got approval at this point right now, but they've, uh, there's going to be a public hearing on that um, the next meeting. And then also in addition, the next meeting they're going to be discussing uh, Cleveland Gymnastic Training Center is looking for a conditional use permit to operate a training facility um, in the business district. And then the only thing, other thing I, w I have uh, to mention is um, <coughs> I attended a workshop regarding, um, I guess, urban uh, walkability. Um, it was a workshop put on at Kent State that um, uh, myself and several people from the city attended. Um, and it, was, it brought a lot of people from surrounding areas that uh, I know Daisy was there. We were part of a team together. Um, it was really an informative meeting, and it's basically we took a look at our downtown area on how we can make it more walkable, friendly, how we can kind of create more pedestrian traffic, how we can kind of connect businesses, um, how, you know, just a, a lot of different things, which, you know, it's, it kind of forces you to sit back and look that, you know, we always constantly look at traffic signals and streets as a way of moving tra traffic as quickly as possible, whereas this was kind of a mindset of let's slow things down and make a safer area that people want to stop and shop and visit. And it's kind of an approach where uh, I think Hudson basically has done it, saying we don't really care about the traffic. That just helps our businesses. The slower people drive by business, the more likely they are to pull over and, and go in it. Um, and it keeps things safer for people walking around there. So it was a really uh, interesting uh, day. It was a full day. Um, I learned a lot, and hopefully as we move forward in our comprehensive review um, <coughs> committee, we can take some of the tools we learned there and, and maybe have a long-term uh, vision for our downtown area. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Scafidi. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my committees have not uh, met within the last few weeks. However, in the name of Public Works, I do want to um, make one quick announcement, and I, I'm not going to steal the Public Works Director's um, uh, report tonight, with regards to the trash carts that have been delivered throughout the city from waste management. As you may or may not know, Ward 1, there were 600 homes that were involved in a pilot program for the past year with those containers. So those residents there in Ward 1 have been using the trash carts for a year now, or over a year now. And the pilot program included weekly rubbish collection um, each and every week. However, the recyclables were only collected every other week. Well, now that this program has gone citywide, and we are in the process of our new contract, um, it was negotiated that recyclables will be collected every week along with the trash. So for all those residents in Ward 1, again, in the pilot program area, the 600 residents, you can now put your recycle container out every week. You don't have to look at the calendar. You don't have to call City Hall. Um, 
there are several times I was looking at my neighbor's house to see if they had theirs out so I knew to put mine out because I even lost track of it. So we don't have to do that anymore. Every week uh, recyclables will be collected so you could put that container out with your trash container at the same time. And um, one other thing because I, I've been getting some inquiries since they went out and again I'm not going to say too much more. I'll let Chris uh, give his report. But um, there is a smaller trash container available to those residents that feel that the one that they received or the standard one was too large, so you can get a smaller one. And I'm sure Chris will go into detail about that. So that's all I'm going to mention about that. Um, I will say one other thing, though. In, in the year that uh, the 600 residents in, in Ward 1 have used it, it, was, it took a little getting used to. Some people didn't like it in the beginning. And once they saw how well it was working and how good it looked, they then demanded that they got a container as well. So. Um, all I could say is give it a try. Uh, I know there's some, uh, some people out there that are just questioning the, the whole program uh, itself, but you know, eventually uh, it works. It's a good program, and uh, I think you'll like it. So the rest I'll leave to Chris. Um, the other thing I want to mention, I talked about this a couple meetings ago, the Tinker's uh, Creek Cleanup Day. Uh, it's coming up fast. It, it's going to be this Saturday, the 18th, from uh, 10 o'clock till noon. And they're going to be meeting at Glen Meadow Park from 9.30 to 9.45. There'll be refreshments there. And shirts will be handed out to all the participants that are there to help clean up Tinker's Creek. The shirts were donated by um, RDP Sports here in Twinsburg. Um, there's going to be various people there. We've got Starbucks employees going to join. The Sprouting Gardeners uh, folks are going to join. The Environmental Commission people are going to be there. Some people from the building department. We've got Twinsburg residents coming out. So it's, uh, it's a nice couple hours to uh, pitch in and uh, uh, do some, some good work at the, in the Tinker's Creek. And again, there will be refreshments served. And uh, we'll be, they'll be leaving from uh, Glen Meadow Park right to Tinker's Creek to um, do that cleanup till noon. So it should be a good day. Hopefully the weather will be good and um, it'll be successful. I know Daisy Walker, um, who's the chairman of our Environmental Commission, has worked uh, tirelessly on this along with the rest of the commission. And so um, I expect that it's going to be uh, going to go very well and be very well attended. There were a lot of uh, volunteers. I'm going to mention this one more time. Home Depot of Aurora and Macedonia have uh, have donated quite a few supplies and things for this collection and to the Sprouting Gardeners as well. So we want to thank them and Starbucks and RDP and everybody else that's um, donated to the effort. We appreciate that. Um, I do want to make one, th one mention to the resident that came up and spoke about information on the website. Um, you know, it might just be a good idea, and I got to tell you, I probably haven't looked at it in a little while, but I, I, you know that when I get home, I'm going to look at it tonight to see what's on there. But, you know, I think that was a great idea, and uh, thank you for bringing that to the attention. I know, Shannon, I might ask that, you might mention to the mayor that um, maybe have the, all the department heads look at their, their page or their information just to see if it's up to date and get it over to whoever you know, does, uh, puts that out there. Okay. That might be helpful. Um, I know in my experience that we've done that in the past. We had uh, us, depart the department heads had to go through their, their web pages just to make sure all the information was current that was out there. And um, so I think that's helpful and I am sure that it'll help you. One other thing as far as our council meetings, I'm, I'm sure you know, maybe you don't know, but they are televised. Um, they were, it was cable nine. I'm not sure what they, they moved the channels around, so I'm not sure what, what channel they're on now, but those our council meetings are televised every week. Uh, they start, I believe, they start on Wednesdays. So they'll be in this tonight's meeting. Will start tomorrow. So that might be another way that you can watch it too. But uh, thank you for bringing that up. I think it was a great suggestion. Other than that, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the mayor is actually um, in Washington D.C. She's attending the uh, Congressman Joyce's District 14 Mayors Conference. Uh, with that, I just have a few announcements <coughs> from, from her that she'd like me to talk about. One is the Metro <coughs> RTA is planning a new demonstration service in Twinsburg, Twinsburg Township, Macedonia, Reminderville, Sagamore Hills, and the Village of Northfield. Uh, their um, pr uh, proposed service will start in the fall of 2013 as a weekday dial, <coughs> excuse me, dial a ride service within these communities. And on th this Thursday, May 16th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall, there will be a uh, informational meeting to learn more information and uh, to give input um, about the service that they're going to be providing. Um, also on May 27, 2013, the City of Twinsburg will celebrate Memorial Day with a parade and service honoring our fallen servicemen and women, so please come out and uh, join us for the parade. 
Um, also, there is a Twinsburg night at the University Hospital's Ahuja Medical Center. Uh, it's Wednesday, May 29th at 6 p.m. Um, the event will introduce you to the leading edge technology being used to treat patients as well as UH sustainability in initiatives. Um, and this is actually just for the city of Twinsburg uh, to uh, learn about that with uh, University Hospital. So it's going to be a nice event there. And then um, the Metro Parks are having a Living on the Ledge, an exhibit of Liberty Park photos from Metro Park volunteer Jerry Cannon. That is Saturday, June 1st from 1 to 3 p.m. Um, and that's at the FA Cyberling Nat Nature Realm Visitor Center. And that's uh, in Akron. Uh, for more information, you can call 330-865-8065. Um, and then for my report, uh, the Environmental Commission met uh, last week, um, and they actually have been able to secure 60 uh, rain barrels from Coca-Cola Company in Twinsburg Township. Uh, the rain barrels are currently stored in the public works area and will be distributed to the Twinsburg residents on a first-come, first-served basis. Um, there will be a display of three to four of the rain barrels, complete with uh, diverter kit, spigot, uh, overflow pipe, and wooden platform um, at City Hall at Public Works, the Fitness Center, and the Twinsburg Library. Um, Coca-Cola will furnish a display board made specifically from Coke packaging um, that have been recycled to hold the rain barrel information. Um, and then there are rain barrel uh, applications to fill out. Um, and just to let you know, the Get Caught Green Handed program is over, um, and approximately $100 $10 gift cards were distributed to Twinsburg residents. It was a one-month program. I didn't win. And you did not. <laughs> um, um, and at the last council meeting, um, we did thank the companies that uh, that were uh, part, part of this. So uh, it was a great program. Again, I know Sam just said it, but kudos to, to Daisy and the uh, Environmental Commission. They've done a great job and, and really getting that started, and, and it was a great program. Um, and then the next meeting, will uh, Environmental Com Commission will meet on September 12th. So with that, that's all I have. Uh, Ms. Stauffer? Uh, the Board of Building and Zoning Appeals met on May 8th, and uh, there was only one appeal on the agenda. Um, at, at this time, I would like to make a motion to waive, and we and they actually approved the um, approved this um, this appeal. So I'd like to make a motion to waive the 30-day waiting period on Appeal o Number 01, 2013, and it's basically just a fence that they wanted to be rebuild. The same, it was the one they had. It was just they wanted to fix. The offense, and that's all. I'll second it. Okay. Shannon, yeah. please call the roll. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Stracy? Yes. And that, yeah, that's it. I just, I'd like to thank the residents for going through the proper channels and going to the building department to, to get this approved. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Stracy? Thank you. The uh, Twins Day Committee met May 1st. And uh, as I had previously uh, announced, their theme for uh, 2013 is Fables and Fairy Tales, and their slogan is going to be Twice Upon a Time. Uh, as of uh, that date, we had 410, 412 sets of registered twins, which is more than a year ago. And uh, they've started a Facebook page, and they have over 6,000 uh, people who like them on Facebook. Uh, also, I wanted to announce again that um, there are several um, rezoning ordinances on the agenda, and there will be a public hearing on uh, May 28th at 6.30 p.m. here at City Hall uh, for these uh, zoning ordinances, um, which is part of uh, the procedure to um, get them uh, approved and or on the ballot. Um, so that will be May 28th, 6.30 p.m. Uh, to add on to what Mr. Uh, Roden had said uh, uh, regarding the Memorial Day Parade, the staging will begin at 9.30 a.m. at Twinsburg High School, and the parade will start at 10.30 um, and travel south from the high school to the square, and the program is expected to start at 11 a.m. in front of the Veterans Monument on the square. And I had one other comment. Uh, I've received uh, several emails this week regarding a proposed uh, water park in the city of Macedonia. Um, and 
as the residents who contacted me um, understood, there's very little that we could do about what happens in Macedonia, even though it's close to our residents and close to our properties uh, on the border there. Um, but the, the mayor has assured me that uh, she will meet with the mayor from Macedonia and see if there is any kind of uh, things that can be worked out uh, regarding the proximity of that project to our residents and um, see you know what the project entails and so forth. So as we learn more about it, I'm sure it will keep you posted. And oftentimes residents know more than we do. Um, I guess this came to light because of the people who are gonna install this actually visited some of the residents in that area, not our residents, but the Macedonia residents. So um, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but we're also not blind to it. And um, we will be talking to, uh, as I said, the mayor said she's going to talk to the mayor of Macedonia and see what could be um, worked out with that project. And that's all I had, thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDermott. Uh, yes, the Architectural Review Board met May 2nd. Um, first item on the agenda was 9235 Helen Lane, the Ryan home, and it was previously presented on 418 to the Architectural Review Board, which approved it as noted. The uh, board amended the uh, motion of 418 with some window changes as noted, and it was approved. The next item was um, 9783 Ravenna Road, a uh, sign. It was approved as submitted. Last item was uh, new vestibule for Wilcox Elementary School with the security was approved as submitted. And that's it, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move to department head reports. Uh, Karen House. Good evening, everyone. You don't have a lot to uh, report tonight other than the fact that um, our state audit will be reconvening in a couple of weeks as the gap conversion is just about pretty much completed. Um, we will be presenting at the next council meeting a resolution to adopt the new um, tax, um, the new um, rates for the police and fire pension, as I mentioned at the previous council meeting, that will be coming before you uh, at the next council meeting as well. And also, we did receive our first advance for this month. And um, normally, I'll report that. But we're up by at least 10% thus far, as far as the income tax report. And I'll give that the absolute report um, at the next council meeting. The finance department will be um, attending a training session on Thursday and Friday of this week, uh, just as we did a couple weeks ago for the new visual intelligence portfolio software package for the finance department. Um, so we will be out of the office on Thursday and Friday. However, if, there, if anyone needs to contact me, of course, I will be retrieving all messages on my uh, cell phone. Okay? Thank you. Thanks. All right, Chief Noga. Good evening. During the month of April, the City of Twinsburg Communication Center generated 2,384 calls for service among the Twinsburg Police and Fire Departments and the Reminderville Police and Fire Departments. The total call count for the year is 10,639, which is a 9% decrease in calls over the same time period in 2012. Twinsburg police officers arrested and or cited 131 suspects into court on 173 different counts. The arrest counts include two assault charges, one domestic violence charge, 12 drug-related charges, 23 for driving under suspension or without a valid license, six for DUI, five other alcohol-related charges, two disorderly conduct charges, two obstructing official business charges, and two child endangering charges. The remaining charges were either warrants or various traffic-related charges. Twinsburg officers issued 224 written warnings on traffic stops and 22 parking citations. Officers investigated 29 traffic crashes, of which four were injury crashes, eight were on private property, and none were fatal. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that we are in the uh, beginning of National Police Week. Uh, tomorrow, May 15th, is National Peace Officer Memorial Day. Uh, that is the day that's set aside by President John Kennedy to uh, memorialize and remember all those police officers, deputy sheriffs who have been killed in the line of duty. 
Uh, you know, it's a specially poignant day for us. Um, we'll re remember Officer Josh McTarian, who was killed in the line of duty here back in July 13th, 2008. Uh, we would ask that everyone join the city uh, and other governmental agencies in uh, lowering your, sta your flag to half staff tomorrow, which is allowed under presidential executive order. So again, uh, we've got two officers that are currently in Washington, D.C. representing us for the ceremonies there, and I'll be headed downtown on Friday for the Greater Cleveland Peace Officer Memorial Society uh, parade and memorial service to represent the city as well. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Chief Racine. <coughs> Evening, Council. Evening, evening. For the month of April, we responded to 172 calls for service. 142 were in the city, 22 were in the township, and eight were mutual aid to other communities. Um, during the same time period this month, we had no mutual aid requests for ourselves. After four months, the 2013 year total is 766, which is 4.5% higher than last year with 33 more runs. Our EMS billing collection through the end of April is $137,561.85 that went to the general fund. <coughs> Fire Prevention Bureau inspected 104 businesses between the city and the township. And the uh, fire department personnel are still flushing hydrants. We're pretty much done with most of everything north of 82 and we've started down in the mm -hmm. south end. We're still a little bit in uh, Glenwood Preserve and Bell Meadow area. They'll, they'll probably be done by Friday. So we're on track to be done by middle of June, I think, at this point. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works, Chris Campbell. Good evening, Council. <laughs> uh, the Service Department continues to patch potholes. Uh, we've done a total of 2,239 this year. Uh, we will be moving into um, a little bit larger uh, road repairs where we do a little bit of grinding and, and filling of, of uh, larger areas. Uh, one of the areas that we, we've looked at is uh, Route 91. We're going to be getting with engineering to establish exactly what areas on 91 we'll be doing. But we should be starting that um, within the next month. Uh, litter, um, we have made a, uh, uh, our first pass through the city uh, picking up litter. Uh, lately, we've, we've uh, been hitting certain areas that, that are uh, heavy with litter. Um, probably in later, later May or June, we'll, we'll go ahead and run another. It's a, it's a uh, specific route that we follow. We'll probably do that again, uh, like I say, in uh, late May or June. Uh, branch chipping, second round of branch chipping has been completed. Uh, this round took us six days to complete at 570 stops, and we removed a total of 221.8 cubic yards of material. The next uh, scheduled round is uh, for Monday, May 3rd. June. 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 <laughs> Third. Is it really? The second? June. Oh, I'm sorry, June. <laughs> June 3rd. Um, uh, street sign replacement. Uh, we continue to move through the city. Um, changing out all the, uh, the road signs to bring those into compliance with federal regs. Uh, we recently completed Grayling Estates and we're moving into the Summit Hills area. Uh, roadway crack sealing. Uh, we recently completed uh, crack sealing on Ravenna Road, Oak Brook, Lockwood Oval, Maryvale, and Fairfield. And our next scheduled roads include Shepherd, Maple Grove, Parker Lane, and Tinker's Lane. Um, that program will, um, will, it's starting to get a little bit warmer out there, at least the forecast is for that. So we'll go as far as we can in the spring. Once it gets too hot, then we'll shut down and we'll be, <coughs> we'll be back in the fall to complete that. The um, Wastewater Department's micro turbine unit uh, continues to uh, run very well. Uh, we've had no issues in the last month. Uh, going into the project, we, we estimated between a $48,000 and a $50,000 savings per year because of the, the uh, uh, electrical generation on that unit. We're, we're now estimating closer to $56,000. That unit is really, it's running well, and it also uh, saves us on some other uh, gas, natural gas consumption. Um, so that, that's, a, that's been a very good project. 
And finally, waste management. Uh, I talked to waste management tonight, and uh, they have completed the delivery of all the uh, containers. They are now back. The delivery company is now a pickup company, and anybody that did not want to use the containers, uh, they've called either us or the waste management number, and they're scheduled for pickup of those containers. Um, early on, uh, the, the um, the call center that, that we were using at Waste Management, uh, they had some bad information. They were giving out some bad information, and so we had we had a little rough start to the to the program. Um, we've gotten that straightened out, and if any residents want to either uh, change the, the the refuse container to a smaller container, that is a possibility. Um, if they don't want to use the containers at all, if they just want to use the recycle container. Whatever they choose to, to do in this program, they, they can do that. All they have to do is, that literature is contained with the containers, they just have to call waste management, and I think they'll get good treatment now with some good information. They can, if they choose to go back to just the way they used to do their garbage and recycling, they can do that, they can use the small containers. The uh, containers were, were, it was an add-on, it was an enhancement to the, to the program. Uh, it wasn't meant to, replace everything if people I know in condos and smaller units can't uh, they can't accommodate those containers and you know we realized that going in and that was that was not an issue for us it's not an issue for waste management I think the problem was with this call center giving out bad information people felt that we had made changes to this uh, program that they would have to comply with and that's that's really not the case so Whatever the residents want to do, we're more than happy to have them do that. So, but uh, they can, uh, we prefer they call waste management with the, with the number that we provided, but if they have to call Public Works, we can certainly accommodate that. Chris, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. The number that was on the brochure yes. uh, was called, and uh, they wanted uh, the smaller, the 64 gallon capacity smaller garbage pail yes they said it wasn't available right yeah is we, that true no the the smaller container is it's the exact same size as the recycle container yes it is available but the, the call center had had their so who do down. they call they can they can call oh, the waste call management center number again? yeah and they'll know what to do they will know what to do but I mean, if, you, if something happens and they don't get the response that they want, they can always call Public Works and we'll take care of it. Oh, I have your number. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> okay. I, Chris, I just wanted to mention one thing. A uh, question that had come up a couple times was um, for those that are going to use the, uh, the carts, if all their trash doesn't fit in the cart, they can still put trash out around bags around the cart and that will be collected as well. So. I think I'm, I'm seeing people, there was some argument going on, I think it was uh, on Facebook or something last <laughs> night about that, about whether or not uh, that's all the capacity you get every week is just, you know, what, what the container will fit, and that's not true. If you have additional garbage, you can put it out and it will be collected, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we really didn't change the service. I mean, we didn't want to reduce the service or anything like that. This was, this was meant to enhance the program. And on the other end of that, if somebody feels they need a, a second refuse container, they can certainly get that. We've got a couple requests for those, and uh, waste management will accommodate that as well. But uh, it's you know it's 96 gallons. It's a lot of capacity. But I've had calls where people say, "No, I've got a lot of garbage." So, and uh, and, and you know, and the other thing is when you look at the recycle container, it, it's a pretty large container. If people go to the, if they, if they move the, the refuse over to the recycle site, we're actually going to save money on this program because we don't pay a dumping fee for recyclables. So this is, you know, this is meant to encourage people to increase the volume of, of what they recycle. So, but in theory, <coughs> what should happen is the the recycle container, the small recycle container, should become your refuse container, and the larger one should be your recyclable. So, but uh, but it, it, at any rate, nothing in the service has changed. You can still put out what you what you did before. 
and if you want to go back to the to the old your old containers your own garbage cans you can do that you can use our recycle container you can use the refuse container whatever a resident wants to do they're more than more than happy to do that for them, so. they'll take your old container if you want them your personal one if you want them to they will yeah they've been doing that and the the small recycle container the little 18 gallon they will take that away for you too if I just had one resident who they actually put their can out, their own personal can was to be brought back to them, uh -huh. but they took it and they kept it. So should they just call waste management? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. Yeah. Put a note on it. I don't know. They didn't put a note, put but a they note took it, it and they t and they got rid of it and they were looking for it and they I said I'm think just call waste management. I'm sure they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll help you out. Old containers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put a note if you want them. So you yeah. have to make sure that that old container is one you're disposing of and not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had I had a couple of questions asking what to do with the old recycle container. Yep, same. So they didn't I stuck it. mine actually in the new recycle container, I, and I saw a lot of people do that. So and they'll, they'll yeah. They'll take it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we're gonna keep we're gonna we're gonna get a few of the the smaller containers too in case somebody had the their they want the original and it somehow got taken away. We'll you know we'll get everything back to where people want it. So. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, that's it for a department head report. Uh, we'll move to legislation. Uh, ordinance 16, 2013. An ordinance creating the Twinsburg Community Improvement Corporation and authorizing the mayor to file appropriate articles of incorporation with the state of Ohio. Okay, this is now its third reading, so I need a motion to adopt ordinance 16, 2013. I'll move. Mr. Scafidi made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Yates seconds. Any discussion? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Mr. Racy. As I mentioned at the uh, last council meeting, um, I haven't really been sold on this idea of the CIC. Um, I've, got, I've, I've read a lot of information on it, and I've talked to people from different communities, um, and one thing keeps coming up um, I, I'm told that it streamlines the process and makes it um, easier and faster for development. Um, and to me, that's just not a good reason for me to, to support this. And I understand and respect my colleagues' opinions on this thing, but um, I just don't see this being the way to go. I think that uh, I, as a council representative, have the responsibility of of making the decisions um, that will be running through this CIC. So I will be voting against that this evening. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? No. <laughs> Mr. McDermott? No. Motion passes. Four to two. Four to two. Okay. Ordinance 55, 2013. An ordinance amending sections of Chapter 1144.04 and 1144.08 of the Twinsburg Zoning and Development Regulations. Okay, this is now on its second reading. Uh, ordinance 56, 2013. An ordinance rezoning certain property at 8701 Darrow Road, Twinsburg, Ohio, owned by the Cleveland Clinic from I-3 industrial use to C-3 commercial use. This also is now on its second reading. Ordinance 57, 2013. An ordinance rezoning certain property at 2500 East Enterprise Parkway, Twinsburg, Ohio, owned by Harris Properties LTD from R-2 residential use to I-2 industrial use. That is also on its second reading. Ordinance 58, 2013. An ordinance rezoning certain property at 8265 Darrow Road, Twinsburg, Ohio, owned by Westside Falls, LLC, from I-2 industrial use to R-7 senior residential use. This is also, on a, that was its second reading. Ordinance 59, 2013. An ordinance rezoning certain property at 8265 Darrow Road, Twinsburg, Ohio, owned by Westside Falls, LLC, from R-2 residential use to R-7 senior residential use. And that one is also on its second reading. Ordinance 63, 2013. 
An ordinance authorizing the sale at auction of certain personal property owned by the City of Twinsburg and no longer needed for municipal purposes and declaring an emergency. I'd like to mo make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance uh, 63 2013, place it on its third and final reading, and declare an emergency. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Stopper <coughs> seconds. Any discussion? Um, just when I say this is on June 25th at 2013 this year, and it's in the evening this time, something a little different. Uh, they're trying, so uh, if you're interested, come out, and uh, there's all kinds of. Is there a list that's going to be up? Um, the list is attached to the legislation. Um, I'm sure we can post it on the website, possibly. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. we should do that. Yeah. Great. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Fury? Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yates? Yes. Emergency passes 6 0. Now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 63-2013 as an emergency. So moved. Mr. Ceresi made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. McDermott seconds. Any discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Motion passes 6-0. <laughs> Next is Ordinance 64, 2013. An ordinance authorizing the sale at auction of certain personal property once owned by KSU and in possession of the City of Twinsburg and no longer needed for municipal purposes and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 64, 2013, place it on its third and final reading and declare an emergency. Is there a second? I'll second. Mrs. Stauffer seconds. Any discussion? Um. This is the property from Kent State that's being auctioned? Correct. All the <laughs> property that was left in the building <coughs> was left, uh, and uh, anything that is sold, the city will get the money from that. Cool. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mrs. Stauffer? <coughs> yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. McDermott? <laughs> yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Emergency passes 6-0. <laughs> now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 64-2013 as an emergency. I'll make the motion. Mrs. Stauffer made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. And Mr. Scafidi, I do this all the time. Mr. Ceresi, <laughs> second. <laughs> Please call the, any discussion? <laughs> Please call the roll. Mrs. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. Roden. Yes. Ordinance passes as an emergency uh, 6 0. Ordinance 65, 2013. An ordinance amending the current year appropriations for the General Revenue Fund Service Maintenance Equipment Facility, as established in Ordinance 148, 2012, the appropriations ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2013 and declaring an emergency. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and ordinance. 65, 2013, place it on its third and final reading and declare an emergency. Is there a second? I'll okay. second. All right, Mr. Yates made the second. Uh, any discussion? Nope. Okay, this just, you know, is $13,500 um, additional money, and this is for a fire vehicle that needed repairs. Okay, uh, please call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mrs. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Emergency clause passes 6-0. Uh, now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 65, 2013 as an emergency. So moved. Mr. Scafidi made the motion. Is there a second? Second. I'll, I'll yield. <laughs> Mrs. Stauffer, yes, second. I'll second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mrs. Stauffer? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Ordinance passes 6-0. Ordinance 66, 2013. An ordinance authorizing the purchase of one plow truck and snow removal equipment for use by the service department and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 66, 2013, place it on its third and final reading and declare an emergency. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Seracy made the seconded. Um, a discussion? 
is for a five-ton plow. <laughs> and the reason the money's the in the capital is so that uh, he can purchase it and it could be uh, possibly be, re be ready for this uh, this winter, the 13 2014 winter. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Roden. Yes. Mr. Seracy. Yes. Mr. Scafidi. Yes. Mr. McDermott. Yes. Mr. Yates. Yes. Mrs. Stoffer. Yes. Emergency passes 6 0. Now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 66 2013 as an emergency. Is sorry. Ready to go with a second? <laughs> so moved. Mr. Yates, now I need a second. I'll second. <laughs> Mrs. Stoffer seconds. Uh, any more discussion? No. Okay, please call the roll. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Stracy? Yes. Ordinance passes 6-0 as an emergency. Ordinance 67, 2013. An ordinance authorizing the lease of two vehicles through Ganley Ford Incorporated for use by the police department and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 67, 2013, place it on its third and final reading and declare an emergency. Is there a second? A second. Uh, Mr. Yates seconds. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Cerisi? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. The emergency passes 6-0. Now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 67, 2013 as an emergency. So moved. Mr. McDermott made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Mrs. Stoffer seconds. Any discussion? Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Ordinance passes 6-0 as an emergency. Ordinance 68, 2013. An ordinance amending the current year appropriations for administration for mayor operating supply as established in Ordinance 148, 2012, the appropriations ordinance of the city of Twinsburg for the year 2013 and declaring an emergency. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 68, 2013, place it on its third and final uh, reading and declare an emergency. Is there a second? No second. Mr. Seracy seconds. Discussion? Uh, this is actually for a copier that's here for in the office here at City Hall, um, and it's not been replaced since 2006, so greatly needed. Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Okay, the emergency passes 6-0. Now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 68, 2013. So moved. Mr. Seracy made the motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Yates, a second. Any more discussion? Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. All right, ordinance passes 6-0 uh, as an emergency. Uh, resolution 69, 2013. A resolution confirming and accepting the recommendations of the Planning Commission for the building addition to Wilcox Elementary School at 9198 Darrow Road. I need a motion to adopt resolution 69, 2013. So moved. Mr. Seracy made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Mrs. Stoffer, second. Any discussion? This is um, for building a new safe entrance to the Wilcox um, Primary School. This was also approved by the ARB Architectural Review Board. Mm -hmm. yes, I, I discussed it during my planning commission. Right. Excellent. It's actually happening at all the schools, but this <coughs> particular location needed an additional uh, construction that had to go through. Uh, planning in ARB. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. All right. Resolution passes 6 0. Um, resolution 70, 2013. A resolution approving a cash advance from the general fund to fund 86 permissive tax fund in order to meet the financial needs of the city. I need a motion to adopt Resolution 70, 2013. I'll move. Mr. Scafidi made the motion. Is there a second? 
I'll second. Mr. Yates, second. Discussion? Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Okay, resolution passes 6 0. Ordinance 71, 2013. An ordinance amending the current year appropriations for administration by creating a new account titled Statutory Capital Improvement Transfers as established in Ordinance 148, 2012, the appropri Appropriations Ordinance of the City of Twinsburg for the year 2013 and declaring an emergency. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 71, 2013, place on its third and final reading and declare an emergency. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Seracy seconds. Uh, discussion on the emergency? Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Okay, the emergency passes 6-0. Uh, now I need a motion to adopt Ordinance 71, 2013 as an emergency. So moved. Mr. Seracy made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. McDermott seconds. Any discussion? Okay, please call the roll. Mr. Ceresi? Yes. Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Roden? Yes. Uh, motion, uh, the ordinance passes 6-0 uh, uh, as an emergency. Resolution 72-2013. A resolution confirming the Planning Commission determination that a yoga studio is a similar use to the use the use is permitted by the right in C5 mixed-use residential business district. Okay, I need a motion to adopt Resolution 72, 2013. So moved. Mr. Seracy made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Mr. McDermott seconds. Any discussion? Uh, this is this what I uh, discussed regarding right. uh, Planning Commission um, determination that uh, C5 district that yoga studios um, are similar uses and this in essence will make them basically permitted uses in that area. We also have a similar use currently. Mm -hmm. We do. There's a yoga studio already in that same district. Okay. Please call the roll. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Resolution passes uh, 6 0. Ordinance 73, 2013. An ordinance amending section 1148.10 of the Twinsburg Zoning and Development Regulations setting forth permitted uses in a C5 mixed residential business district. Okay, that's on its first reading. And Ordinance 74, 2013. An ordinance rezoning certain property at 8265 Darrow Road, Twinsburg, Ohio, owned by the Westside Falls LLC from I-2 industrial use to R-7 senior residential use. Okay, and that also was just on its first reading. All right, next we move into unfinished business, new business and miscellaneous. Mr. McDermott. I have none. Mr. Seracy. Yes, uh, just to repeat what I said earlier, there'll be a public hearing on all of these uh, re rezoning ordinances on May 28, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. And that's it, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Stoffer. I have nothing. I have nothing this evening. Mr. Scafidi. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Mr. Yates. No, nope, nothing this evening. Uh, Mr. Maestros. Nothing, thank you. Okay. Shannon. Nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, at this time, we can excuse uh, absent members. So we'll excuse Mr. Fury. So moved. moved. Thank you. Oh, we have to do a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll Do the roll. I was in Thank second. You. Do the roll. <laughs> Mr. Yates second? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Okay. Now I need a motion to enter into executive session to discuss matters pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 121.22. So moved. <laughs> All right, Mr. Seracy and Mr. McDermott second. Please do the roll. Mr. Seracy? Yes. Mr. McDermott? Yes. Mr. Scafidi? Yes. Mr. Yates? Yes. Mrs. Stoffer? Yes. Mr. Roden? Yes. <coughs> All right. 
We'll reconvene after our session.